as uh, some of you may notice today, we have been a bit of unusual activity on board the ship. The crew and I have been working with the local authorities and some guests on board to investigate whether a person may have gone overboard last night, or I can say early this morning. We hope to have the issue resolved shortly. My son boarded a Royal Caribbean ship for his honeymoon and he never got off and we want to know why. I recall when I first heard about the so-called missing groom, 26-year-old George Smith. He had met his wife-to-be, Jennifer Hagel, while she was teaching school and he was set to run the family business. She had been at Trinity College, he had been at Massachusetts at college. They seemed to have everything in the world going for them. They were happy, they were in love, they had a lavish wedding. I recall seeing all the photos of them outdoors at, at the wedding. They went on a really luxurious honeymoon. And sadly, that is where everything went wrong. Jennifer Hagel Smith was found at 4.30 in the hallway, um, further down the hallway from my brother's cabin, and three crew members from, from their own statements uh, went back down the hallway to see if my brother was there, and he was not in the room. They entered the room, um, you know, they obviously must have turned on the light to look for my brother, um, did not notice the blood in the cabin, ignored the fact that there had been complaints on both sides of my brother's cabin, um, and then got Jennifer and returned her to the cabin in a wheelchair with no concern about where my brother was. Really, um, they should have realized that a crime had been committed in that room at 4.45 or 4.30 in the morning, not 8.30 in the morning when they saw the blood on the overhang. This was a honeymoon cruise, and this was a couple that had just been married and were very, very much in love. In fact, George Smith contacted his family and said, I'm having such a wonderful time, I don't want anybody to contact me unless there's a death. This was a cruise that the, the value of it was about $10,000 for the couple. There were 2,300 people on board the ship, and Jennifer and George flew from JFK Airport in New York to Barcelona. They spent a couple of days in Barcelona. Then they boarded this cruise ship, and they began their cruise going toward the French Riviera, where they stopped and enjoyed themselves in that area. And then the cruise continued down the southern part of Italy, and that's where it docked, and that's where it was on July 4th. It was to be a day uh, of excitement and enjoyment. They got back to the ship, rested for a bit, and had a very romantic dinner the night of July 4th. When that ship came to Turkey, um, that ship should have been locked down. That was a crime scene, and uh, they pulled, Royal Caribbean pulled out of there with my son and his wife off the ship, and the murderers left on. This has gone away from, uh, this ought to be about Mr. George Smith and his disappearance and how can we get answers to that and we have gone far afield from that and you know I do understand they've gone through a terrible trauma I can't even imagine what it's like to lose your child and and it must be a terrible feeling and I'm sure I would feel like lashing out at the world but there has been so much misinformation there have been so many erroneous misleading just dead wrong things said about this we waited six months, and in deference both to the family and to the FBI's investigation, we said absolutely nothing. We did as little as we could to do anything that would in any way uh, impede the investigation or um, um, in, uh, upset the family. But I think um, the crew in this case work very hard under very difficult circumstances, and I think they did an outstanding job. I don't think they did a perfect job. I don't think we ever will. We have, this is not something we have experience in. Why didn't the ship just stay? They're saying you moved on for commercial reasons. Yeah. You know, um, we're the only industry in the world that I know of that voluntarily reports, without any obligation to do so, to the FBI any crime that happens anywhere in the world on our ships to American citizens. No other industry does that. But we do it voluntarily. And in this case, we told the FBI, we, 
we told the U.S. Embassy, we told the um, Turkish authorities, they came on board, they did a full investigation, they did fingerprints, they took evidence, they took blood samples, they took photographs, we gave them 97 tapes, we gave them the computer lock information of when people come in and out. We have a special uh, pass system we call C-Pass on the ship, which keeps track of every person who goes in and off the ship. And we gave all that information. At the end of their forensic investigation, it doesn't take forever to do that, apparently. I'm not an expert. Um, they said they were finished. And we waited another three hours before we took any action whatsoever. And it, we left, actually, about four hours after they said, we basically have nothing more we need to get from you. Clearly the scene has been uh, contaminated, if you will, Not, and I don't mean anything negligent or, or by that, but just that there, it's been cleaned and people have been in and out, uh, the cabin apparently may have been used and so forth, so that really uh, impacts on your ability to get evidence related to the event that happened seven months previously. Our tragic story made headlines for a long time, day after day, night after night. My family, who is here with me today, and I were so devastated by his loss and all of the negative attention, which was very intrusive and overwhelming during such a, a painful time. George was an excellent swimmer. He could have 15 miles, I think he could have made with no problem. If he was in good shape when he left that ship, he could have survived. But what about the blood? Well, that's why we probably think he couldn't have done. My mother says she looks at the back door and waits for him to come in. It's hard not to think of George in this house filled with so many memories. That's from the wedding. That's the wedding, yeah. Including the photos the family shared with me of George and Jennifer Smith's wedding on June 25th in Newport, Rhode Island. We had never seen him so happy in his life. He was so thrilled they were madly in love. Everything, of course, came to a crashing halt only 10 days into their marriage. And it was near the island of Mykonos in the Aegean Sea where tragedy struck. George and Jennifer had a romantic dinner aboard the ship on July 4th, 2005. And after that, they decided that they'd go gamble a little bit, something they had been doing. So they went to the ship's casino. They were playing at separate tables. When the casino closed, though, at 2.30, they weren't ready to call it a night. According to our reports, the evening's events did not jive with the physical evidence. Reports were that Jennifer and George had been partying all night, that they had had a lot to drink, including um, a particular liquor that is actually outlawed in a lot of countries, absinthe. Now we know why. What happened in the next hours has always remained unclear. Um, he was a real family guy. He was hysterically funny. And I think um, everyone that knew him loved him because he had so much to offer and he was just genuinely kind. And it really is a terrible loss to all of us that loved George. George was very athletic. He played a lot of sports. 
and um, he was always out with his friends and being sociable, and he was also very family-oriented. We used to go on vacations together, and, um, you know, he was always calling us. He just really was the all-American boy that everyone wishes that they could have in their family. I have interviewed George's family in person extensively, and they are convinced that George was murdered. George disappeared on July 5th, 2005, so it is now seven and a half years that, almost seven and a half years that George has been missing. George was halfway through a 10-day cruise in the Mediterranean when he disappeared from the Royal Caribbean cruise ship Brilliance of the Seas. His last day was spent in Mykonos, the port of Mykonos, and he and Jennifer were enjoying the local Greek food, which my brother loved and they were riding a scooter around the island and they were having an amazing time. When they got back to the ship, they dressed for dinner and they went to Chop's Steakhouse, um, one of the more elegant dining rooms apparently on the Royal Caribbean Brilliance of the Seas. And um, that's unfortunately when everything started to um, go bad. 26-year-old groom George Smith's body was never found. It was lost at sea. Even after relentless attempts by multiple authorities to find his body, it was never found. It was claimed by the sea. But what we did find was blood. Blood inside his cabin and the ship blood on a tent top, an awning outside. Yeah, well, well something happened in that room. You, I mean, you've got uh, ear witnesses who are hearing something happen in there that sounds like there's an altercation. And we know the end result. We know that he disappears. So you take a look at the physical evidence there. You take a look at the blood on the side uh, of, the, of the boat. And you, you try to put this together and, and who in a timeline, timelines are so important. If you've got videotape surveillance and you've got a time for when that is taken and you have a rough estimate as to when this altercation takes place and what does it all mean? Where is everyone during this time frame? And for me, that's, that's crucial in trying to understand what happened. So who would be able to be in the room at the time that you have these ear witnesses telling you that they hear a struggle. It sounds like someone's rummaging uh, 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 through what's inside the room. You hear that thud. And that, those are specific things that people witnessed. And you've, you've got to be able to say, who could have been in that room? Who says they were in that room? Really the lack of justice in my son's case. Um, you know, the seven and a half years of fighting, going in and out of court, um, you know, depositions, um, uh, litigation, and then nothing happens. That to me is, it just blows my mind. Somehow he ended up on the balcony of his cabin and then fell off the balcony. It was about four feet up. You'd have to be Nadia Comaneci to get over that balcony. And they're designed that way so people don't fall overboard. He fell down from the balcony onto an awning and then out to sea. Passengers on the ship were the ones that saw the blood up on the awning and started taking pictures of it. They found the blood, George Smith's blood on the awning, not the authorities. You had a captive audience there on Brilliance of the Seas. His body was lost somewhere between Mykonos and Turkey. What did they do? They let people leave. Sure, police can go back and look at the roster of the hundreds and hundreds of people on the ship, but they needed to be questioned then. Another issue came up as to 
the bride, Jennifer Hagel. Where was she? She, by all accounts, was found passed out far away from the uh, cabin chambers where they were sleeping, still dressed in her outfit from the night before. Either she was slipped a drug in her drink or she drank so much she just passed out, sitting in the hallway. She had no idea what had gone on. You know, uh, something happens, you've got to cordon off the scene. You've got to get the forensic people in there immediately. You've got to hold lock down the witnesses or potential witnesses and speak to them almost immediately. But most people don't realize that uh, 10 minutes before Jen was brought back, two Royal Caribbean employees went into George's cabin looking for George. This has not been out there before. This is a new timeline. And uh, we think that when they went into George's room, they saw the crime scene and they would have realized that something had gone down. We also have the same problem in the missing groom case that we have in a lot of cases, and that is a delay in reporting. When Jennifer Hagel finally sobers up and gets back to her room, she has a spa appointment that morning at 8.30. So she sees that George isn't in the room and she mistakenly believes he is still hanging with his friends that he was partying with the night before. You need more. You need the words of someone who was there. And those words could come from someone admitting it to authorities or those words could come from that videotape. I remember coming out and being approached by these men and having them just say, you know, we we are looking for George and we found blood and whatever. We now have reason to believe that there's some blood in the room. George died. He's gone. He's not alive. I, I think we know that. How did he die though? Was it accidental? Was it murder? Was it was it a robbery gone bad? That's a question that can only be answered um, by someone who knows, someone who was there. The physical evidence and the way the investigation took place, it just wasn't an ideal investigation. We uh, did not have opportunity to examine the carpet and padding. That's probably yield much more evidence. And, uh, of course, we was planned to conduct a mannequin experiment that wasn't conducted. So basically, five original experiments I want to do, we was able to achieve three. So it was well on mid-morning before she realized her husband was missing. Can you imagine looking out at the ocean and seeing the waves pass and knowing that somewhere way back, God knows where, your husband has gone overboard? We did everything we could because George was so strong and so muscular. We thought that he could swim if, you know, he was okay when he went in the water, but unfortunately, I don't think he was okay when he went on the overhang. We all love and miss George very much. Today is not simply about George. This is a much larger issue. It is about helping other families get their stories out in the forefront. This is about standing together on Capitol Hill with other victims and their families, and about shedding light on some important issues regarding safety and security on cruise ships worldwide.